Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Manuel Rimbao. I've been working with Honeywell for 12 plus years in the advanced manufacturing group, plan management, and right now in product validation and engineering. So what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is give you an introduction to turbo technology and also the effect of analytics that we've had in a different environment, which is product validation and product manufacturing. Uh, something that's been resonating around the uh, conferences that I've been to right now is we've been focusing on analytics, mostly on energy conservation, right, and plant management and facilities, right? So I want to give you a different perspective of, of what we put in practice on discrete manufacturing environments and product validation. So, laser and forward. Okay, so first of all, an introduction of what a turbocharger is, and possibly, I'm not sure if somebody here drives a turbocharged vehicle. Uh, it's, uh, anybody raise of hands in there, you know, <laughs> by any chance? <laughs> okay, so uh, turbos are becoming very popular right now. A base, what happens is uh, engine management has changed, and turbos are the key to giving us 30 plus miles per gallon, and even more in the future, as I will be walking you through in the next minutes. So what happens is a turbo, instead of being, sure, okay, there we go, wow, that's different. So, <laughs> so a turbo, uh, what it does is your exhaust gases, instead of just going out to the atmosphere, they go inside a turbine. The turbine housing is going to spin a, a rotating assembly, which is going to pull air from ambient. That is going to be compressed and go inside the charger cooler, which is going to be fed inside the combustion engine, the internal combustion engine. What happens here is instead of uh, you needing eight cylinders like you, need bef you needed before in the past for high power, high torque applications, you can now reduce your number of cylinders and you can basically inject more fuel out of your demand. You don't got to be carrying the that weight of eight cylinders or six cylinders of your vehicle or your application does not require that anymore. So it's a very interesting um, uh, drivetrain technology that I invite you to use or consider next time you buy a vehicle, right? Also, so let me, this right here. Obviously, a turbo can have a very hard life, right? It's connected to the exhaust, you know, of your vehicle. So this is. Uh, the turbos basically they spin very fast, like around 240,000 RPM, and they also burn at 1,000 plus degrees Celsius, you know, temperatures. So uh, when, oops, when we're saying, you know, that turbochargers, you know, have a very unique manufacturing and product validation process, it's what I'm saying is all those critical interface characteristics need to be controlled so that it, we can give you an under the hood application that is always uh, surviving and that you're not going to have any issues with, right? You don't want any recalls, you want your vehicles to be performing always fine, and that's something we got to ensure. So this is the part where the analytics are also going to come in effect so we can do something interesting about, you know, the, the way we operate. So why is turbo increasing so much right now? You guys hear about, you know, Ford looking at you at Volkswagen, that BMW that Stuart, you know, just talked about doing 240 kilometers an hour, it's turbocharged, right? So it's, the, it's a good alternative to go fast and save fuel. So uh, recent, uh, recent uh, news, right, the Obama announced that by 2025, all vehicles need to be averaging, the fleets need to average 54 and a half miles per gallon. And what we mean by this is basically that not only Toyota with a Prius is going to be able to give us good economy, right? We're also looking at the Fords, the Chevys, and the rest of the OEs out there to provide good engine management and drivetrain so they can all increase their average consumption. Obviously, less foreign oil dependency, better gas mileage for us, less impact to our pocket, right? So very good news there. And turbo is a key enabler for that fuel efficiency because we can reduce engine downsizing. A little bit of uh, introduction of what you are seeing out there right now. It's a uh, Cadillac, you know, that I, the Cadillac that is right there on the left, right, it's the ATS. It's, uh, we saw it in the Super Bowl commercials, you know, a couple of Sundays ago. It's a very interesting drivetrain. It's a 265 horsepower vehicle that do, does 60 miles per hour in 5.6 seconds and gives you 34 miles per gallon on gas. So amazing numbers, amazing dynamics when you're driving this vehicle. And the vehicle next, next to it is a Taurus SA Show. It's 3.5 liter, 370 horsepower. It has so much torque and it can drag an elephant across the room, right? So it's a very unique application. So I invite you to please drive turbo, look at those vehicles. They're great, you're gonna love it. It's a very unique experience. 
All right, so going into analytics and a bit of the durable operation where we're seeing, uh, where we're putting this into practice, I'm gonna give you an intro of what we're doing, you know, across, you know, labs in the operation. The manufacturing base is divided into 12 countries. Uh, product validation and test labs are in eight countries. Part of our uh, core components is uh, it's the high volume CNC machining, high volume turbo assembly, and we're obviously a tier one supplier for the automotive OEs, the Ford, the Chevys, Volkswagens, BMWs, and those. What I want to mention here is uh, we talked about not being the energy area, not being the plant facilities and all that, so it's mostly the part of product validation and manufacturing we're going to be talking about this, where the analytics come in place. So a problem statement, uh, you can see that right here, good. Uh, lack of IT support in manufacturing, right? It's uh, our operations, you know, even though we have corporate IT, there's a big lack of uh, that corporate IT really touching and understanding the needs of your operation. I mean on the manufacturing side and on the product validation side. So when we hear a corporate IT, they're talking Blackberries, we're talking Windows images, we're talking different things that are not really unique to the, uh, to the environment of production and product validation. Assembly, right? Equipment from multiple vendors, assembly lines from multiple integrators. In order to put, you know, this beautiful turbos together, we got to do a lot of work in the assembly lines and, and machining. So not all of them come from the same persons, from the same integrators, so we got to find a way to make sure they all talk to each other also. Needed to share data in real time across assembly stations and assembly lines. And why, what I mean by that is we're using cloud technology to make sure that all of our data is in a central repository, and from that perspective, the systems may have intelligence to check if the product, you know, where it's at. There's routings that are defined and they're checked into so that we can guarantee that the product is going through a certain sequence and ensure quality there. I talked about that one in the next one, uh, quality and serial number traceability. Needed collection of all assembly data such as torque, leak test, final testing, pros and balance. What I'm saying on that bullet point that I have right here is that basically tooling and machine condition is critical to the quality of our product. So the analytics are gonna come into play by telling us trends, by studying the trends to tell us about situations maybe happening to the equipment so we can trigger a shutdown or we can say, okay, the torques are not you know, being a, a complied, we gotta make sure we change sockets, et cetera, right? Very similar to what Stuart mentioned on just-in-time manufacturing, this is very important. The perspective of uh, always having the uptime because of the high volume OEs that we are demanded, you know, on that. And for machining, issues connecting to a different variety of equipments, uh, machines to see if they were running or idle. Uh, when you're machining also, you gotta look a lot at your existing plant capabilities. And sometimes we believe we gotta buy more equipment when we're really not utilizing our equipment to the utmost capacity. I know there's measurements around that like OEE, but there's ways to understand with analytics if certain downtimes are associated to product technologies, right? So there are, more, there are, there are different products that are more difficult to machine than others, so it's good to understand this through a system that can tell us that information. Well, and needed a way to usually store and visualize data. We've been talking about dashboards and all that. Problem statement for test labs. Outdated unsupported applications. Uh, configuration changes required code changes. Lack of process workflow. Is storing data on individual hard drives. Unable to easily share data quickly. What I'm trying to say there is we, we had a system that was built in house and that's a part of the corporate IT not being able to touch our, the needs of a product validation test lab. For example, all of the test practices with control were developed in-house. And we're develop when they're developed in-house, you start lacking revision control, you start looking at the right practices that the industry is going for. So we were missing a lot of that. And by looking only inside our walls, we were thinking we were doing the right thing there. So obviously a lot more opportunities you know, that we had there. Uh, unable to use analytical techniques, things were being shared, uh, stored in hard drives and thumb drives. Not utilizing current technology, we definitely didn't have databases around for our product validation and our manufacturing information, and no platform to grow up on. It was in the status quo, basically. That's what we've been running and operating in the past. Fragmented system across facilities, so people were growing, the teams were growing their platforms, you know, separate from each other without sharing best practices. Next. So how do we, what was our, you know, idea to overcome this, right? We needed to partner with a company with the ability to rethink the solution and challenge the current processes. 
Uh, use new technologies was all was also requirement. Database, web services, mobile devices. We've been talking a lot about that in the in all the conferences right now. Global solution, flexible yet standardized. Incorporate human factors in the design and usage of the system. A platform to grow upon. Redefine the role of the services performed by the lab and the manufacturing organization. Provide not only engineering service but also engineering tools. So. We can put a very nice system out there, but if it's only gonna be used by a certain team and that data may not be accessed by the engineering folks which are my end customers, there's really, we're really not gaining a lot in there, right? So the idea is to be able to store this data, analyze those trends, and also pass that data to the product validation team so they can make decisions on how they're designing their parts. So cycle time and quality is not only on the manufacturing side, it's also around the product development and design validation. And that's the part that is very interesting here that I'm excited about. Solution for machining, right? Cloud-based data collection system, support for MT Connect and Fanuc Focus, a lot of equipments out there. We have, you know, every manufacturing site around the globe has around 150 plus machining centers, so very interesting to, and very important to have that. You know, we were wiring things across, you know, the shop floor before, before we went to Wi-Fi, so now the cloud is holding all that information together and we can move machines parts around from, uh, we can move machines around the shop floor, so a lot of good ideas have been coming into place. Standardized hardware for older machines. Uh, obviously, all the machining centers are not up to date all the time. Some of them are uh, RS-232, you know, ports that we gotta collect data from and we gotta find a ways to put them inside the network too. And others are very update, you know, up-to-date controls. So there's a lot of challenges here that we need to account for, right? We can't just leave a piece of equipment out on that, so. Collection from CNC and manual machines, part of what I mentioned right now. Utilization summary and breakdown visual manufacturing with a real-time digital dashboard, data access from mobile devices. As we've been saying, right, how we were operating before, we did not have that platform, and now we have it, which is great. And ability to measure daily accountability and indicators, part of what Stuart was saying, right, red means we gotta react, so daily accountability, having access to this information on a daily basis is telling us we gotta do something. It's our responsibility as an operation. Solution in an assembly line, right? Uh, compare the setup and flow parts to the routing. Control the process of a serial number basis, right? The same aspect of a cloud, you know, in a manufacturing environment. We store all the data in the cloud, and from that perspective, the machine is gonna be able to check if the part, that, if the route that the part is following is the correct one, right? This could happen if you have multiple assembly lines, right? Sometimes, you know, because of the equipment being down, the part shouldn't follow up uh, a certain, you know, process and it's gonna jump to another assembly line that has a capacity to absorb it. So we need to tell the system that we're still complying and have a good quality and this is a way to do it. Put information in the cloud, so. Control the process across multiple assembly lines, you know, went ahead on that. Halt the assembly station if you're not meeting the quality and provide feedback to the routing based on that, on that specification. Real-time historical browser-based reporting, uh, digital and on, which means, you know, making the right decisions in the shop floor based on what is happening. So are you running, you're not running? Are you in setup, you know, are you doing changeover? You gotta be able to visually understand what is happening on your shop floor. You can't just leave it to the techs, as we mentioned, or the operators that have the skill set or the go-to guy you trust out there, right? And collect data in a real-time to a centralized database. Uh, pass fail data, actual value, Torx leak, very unique to Turbo, but at the end is manufacturing critical interface characteristics, what we have in there. Uh, delivery architecture, right? And the way this is managed is we can, we have a central uh, repository system, right? You know, which is what we're highlighting right here. And from that perspective, you know, the team, you know, each facility can have their own website, allowance sites to have control of their upgrades. So from that perspective, you know, we can control what revisions or what, you know, types of, uh, of updates each site's gotta receive. Not one solution, one solution fits all, but maybe not all the sites are ready for a certain update. And that's what we were attacking with this, you know, perspective. Uh, the same, you know, on the other updates can be based on the platform rather than a general version of for everyone. So uh, in case, you know, there's, there's also very different practices between our commercial vehicles and our passenger vehicles, so there's a way to separate those and create different expectations in the system for quality checks, so. The application architecture, and I'm going into the lab specifics right now, which is the control testing and design and uh, uh, product validation. 
uh, we had a generic lab view environment, and that's one that we grew upon, you know, locally in each of the sites. What we wanted to do is, you know, create a, bring the better tools in place. So .NET is what we put in there, talking to LabVIEW. That's what we're saying in this part right here. Where is the pointer? I can't find it. But, uh, anyway, so LabVIEW code, NI hardware talks to the LabVIEW code. And from that perspective, you know, the users interact with .NET to always, you know, have a very attractive graphical approach, real-time viewers, and, uh, and, and traces for what they're doing in the environment. So it's a very different perspective. For those that are familiar with LabVIEW here, it's a very uh, chunky, old-style way of uh, controlling, you know, or seeing at the screens. And .NET has given us that flexibility. We have a very attractive user interface, which is really exciting. Benefits, right? Centralized code and updates, friendly common workflow based on user interface. Again, you know, we're not relying on just, you know, certain technicians or operators to have a certain skill set. Our learning curve for new people coming in is reduced, which is great. Internationalized user interface, and uh, by having a database approach, you know, we're now multi-language capable, right? We have facilities in Shanghai, France, Italy, Mexico, United States, right? We handle the language translation through the database, right? The same people that are accepting the software are gonna do the translation, so local terminology is gonna apply to the daily operation, and this is great, you know? We have China users, Right now, some in the past, using uh, U.S. software and the gap, you know, to understand what was going on there was really difficult. So, centralized data storage allowing for analytic an analysis, reduction of setup time, reduction of time to analyze the data, and an engineering tool, not just a service. So, as I mentioned before, also engineering customers are seeing the benefit of this. Lessons learned, legacy knowledge may not always be the best. Adaptation to a new way of think thinking takes, takes time. With entirely new processes, an agile approach is essential. Initial resistance to change was high for some, but after initial implementation, the acceptance was high. So a success story, right? It's, uh, it was difficult to move eight labs, you know, from the previous, you know, way of working and controlling their own revisions of code, which were not controlled. On a daily basis, you don't look at that, right? And now to have in a centralized, you know, application with databases, it took us a while, but we're really excited that we're there now. Now it's time to pull the to put the analytics to full horsepower, you know, and make them work for us. And that was my last slide. So buy turbo, guys. Okay, go Ford, go Chevy. So. <laughs>